Okay, guys, so we're going to do an exercise called the hip hinge. Uh, this exercise is from our movement training phase, and this is going to teach, uh, teach us how to uh, load the glutes appropriately so that when we move into squat and power-based movements, that we become glute-dominated rather than quad-dominated. So what I'm going to set you up with is uh, a dowel or a long bar. I'm just going to ask you to place it behind you so that you're able to hold it so it uh, makes a connection with the back of your head, your thoracic spine, and just down at your tailbone. We're going to set you up with the feet just a little wider than hip distance apart. Right? Think about soft knees, draw your belly in, keep your spine nice and long, and maintaining those contacts, we're going to get you to push the hips back, tip over, and stand up. So we're not looking for a big tip over, we're only looking for about 30 degrees, and getting you back up to standing. So give that a try. Good. So again, we're looking for those contact points, a nice open chest, long in the spine, belly is braced, just a soft bend in the knees. And then think about initiating the move by pushing your hips back, folding over the hips just to there, that's beautiful, and then standing up. And then doing that again. Once again, if we can create this hip hinge movement, that's going to allow us to get more activation for the glutes and less activation for the quadriceps once we start squatting. Good. And we're just going to be working to a set of 10 to 15 of these, right? Body weight only. Terrific. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, good. Our second exercise in our progression is something called the body weight squat. So we've already built the hip hinge, which is the beginning of our squat movement. All we're going to add to it is movement through the knee and ankle. Right? And again, we're going to start with body weight, but eventually we're going to start to think about adding additional weight to it. Right? So again, we're going to start with the feet a little wider and hip distance apart, toes point out. As you initiate the squat, hip hinge, and then sit the hips down and back. And then what we want to do is triple extend through the ankle, the knee, and the head as you come up to a standing position. Right? Uh, if you like, we can actually start with the hands in here, because this is going to be our natural progression into our front squat, which is going to be in the next one. So again, toes a little wide from your hips. Bring your, your fingertips till they touch your shoulders. Or think about keeping your elbows up and your chest up. Right? And then think about Hinging from the hips, dropping down and back, keeping the chest up, and then triple extension as you come up. Sit down and back, and then come to the top. All right, just a few more. So, So, Doug, I want you to continue. I'm just going to give you this to hold on to. Just hold it nice and close to your chest. And then continue on. So, again, hips sit down and back. Stand straight up. Now think about activation to the glutes as you drive upward. We're trying to do 90. And once again, we're going to be doing sets of 12 to 15 as we build in your movement phase and start to build out endurance. Great. Just one more. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, Doug, so we're going to be moving you into the load phase of your, of your training program now. We're going to be taking you into an exercise called the front squat, and this is just a natural progression for our uh, hip hinge and for our body weight squat that we've done earlier. So I'll give you a quick little demonstration. We're going to get you inside the squat rack, and again, a front squat is a little bit different from than a back squat. What I'll ask you to do is step in towards the Olympic bar, we're going to get you to get under it and then extend your legs as you step back. We're going to enter in with a cross over grip. Right? The bar is going to rest on your shoulders right about the level of your throat. Now your challenge is going to be to keep the elbows up and the chin up. Right? Once you're set, feet are a little wider than your hips, toes pointed out just slightly. We're going to have you sit straight down, knees bent just slightly more than 90 degrees, and stand back up. So a quick demonstration with a lighter bar. Right. Once again, loading it up, cross position, elbows high, chest high. We're going to sit back and down, and then drive to the heels to stand up. 
butterflies. Right. So once you're done, we'll get you to step back towards the rack and re -rack. Okay? So go ahead, come on and step right in. So we place the bar at a level when you're still able to get underneath it. So once again, the bar is about the level of the throat, resting on the tops of the shoulders with a cross grip. When you're ready, think about bracing your abs, keeping the elbows up and the chest up. Get you to slip the hips down and drive up. So we're going to get you to perform eight to ten repetitions. Think about squeezing the glutes as you come up. Beautiful. Two more for the knee, one more. Beautiful. And then stepping back into the rack, re racking. All right, Doug, we've got one more exercise in our progression. It's uh, out of our power and performance phase, it's called the hang clean. So we're going to take uh, the exercises that we've done up to this point in progression. We're going to put them together for this final powerful movement. So we're going to bring the hip hinge, the squat, and then that front squat movement together uh, into an explosive movement that's going to add speed and power. Okay? So what we'll get you to do is pick up your bar. This is about 50 to 60 percent of your one rep maximum. We will set with the feet somewhere between hip and shoulder distance apart. Hands wrapped right just outside the line of your head. Right? We are going to come into the hang position by tipping forward in that hip hinge that we began with. Right, and you can come anywhere down between the hip and the knee to the top of the kneecap. Right. From that position, we're going to drive through the heels and the hips and shrug the shoulders and literally jump underneath the bar. So we're going to come up, under, and stand. To reset, hinge, explode under, stand. Once you become more comfortable, you can start to come a little bit deeper in your squats if you like. So tip over, sit, stand. Alright? Let's give it a go. So we're bringing in a bar for you. It'll create a challenge. We're keeping the reps nice and low during the set, usually between about four to six repetitions per set. Okay. So when you feel ready, I want you to think about bending your knees to deadlift the bar up safely. You've got that nice wrap of the hands around the bar. Right, hands outside the body line. Think about again, bracing the abs, opening the chest, setting the shoulder girdle, coming from your hinge, and then exploding under to stand up. Okay. Beautiful. Try again. Mm -hmm. Over. Yep. Explode. Perfect. So next time, you think about almost jumping under the bar as quick as you can. Hinge. I, I know. I jump. Stand. Beautiful. Can you do two more like that? Hinge. Jump. Stand. Outstanding. One more time. One more time. Jump. Well done. Well done. Okay, be sure to bend your knees and place the bar back on the floor. Yeah. Terrific. How does that feel? Fine. Fantastic. Thank you.